What up, people? It's Snick Ops here, and today I'm going to be talking about something that I didn't want to ever have to talk about again. And I really don't want to discuss this, but I feel like it's only right that I do. And it's simply just time. Like, it's time that I discuss this without holding it back anymore. And that is going to be me talking about is Mortal Kombat 11 going to die soon? Now, in case y'all didn't know, my channel started off with Injustice 2 content. I posted a lot of content for that game for like a year, and then they killed off the game. Now, the difference what I'm going to be talking about with Injustice 2 and MK11 is they chose to kill Injustice 2. They literally made the Legendary Edition in like a year, and they just were done with that game. But... This video is going to be me talking about, you know, MK11 and everything about it in terms of, uh, let me just answer the question now. <laughs> yes, MK11 is going to die soon, in my personal opinion, if something doesn't change. And I'm going to be discussing why. MK11 had the potential to be a very, very great game. But MK11 is the product of what a lot of pros complained about in the last MK, and we got MK11 now. So basically put it like this, pros will whine for more options on this, more options on that, we need the game to be played like this, we don't want it to be played like that. And that is how we got MK11, because a lot of the things that people didn't like in MKX. So, the product that you see in MK11 is the product of all of basically what the pros wanted it really is if you were around in the mkx era then you know what i'm talking about for sure and i feel like mk11 has dropped the ball in so many situations to where they didn't even have to it's just let's just get into it so first things first aftermath aftermath had the potential to keep the game going for a good while like a very, very good while, but they dropped the ball on it. They charged you $40 for three characters and like a three hour story. Now the story was definitely good, don't get me wrong. I very much enjoyed playing that story. It was a good time on stream and everything. And I liked it, but I didn't feel like it was really worth it after it was over and said and done and then on the topic of the three characters that came out in Aftermath. Shiva, Robocop, and Fujin. Here's the reason why the character release wasn't good for Aftermath. They released too many characters that people did not give like a crap about that much. Just keeping it real. If most people who bought Aftermath really wanted to play Fujin, not a lot of people cared about Robocop or Shiva, just keeping it real. So they bundled that $40 package in like, you want to play Fujin? Y'all waited like dang near a decade for him to play him. I think it's 14 years since he was last in MK. So here you go. And then they released those three characters. And I feel like it was a horrible bundle release. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying the characters, you know, individually was a horrible release. Just the bundle, because look at it like this. Shiva, people didn't really care about Shiva that much, just being honest. Robocop was a surprise pick, and he's a zoner, so not a lot of people are going to play him like that. Just keeping it real, like, people don't really like playing as zoners, and it just is what it is. I find nothing wrong with that. Zoning is boring. And Fujin. Fujin is very, I won't say very hard to play, but he is hard to play. Very hard to play for, like, the average player, but Fujin came out like an execution type character. So that complete bundle, like in one, releasing all those characters together with all these different quirks and problems about like the general consumption of the characters, it just wasn't right. I feel like they should have released like more characters that people cared about in a bundle and then, you know, package it like that. I feel like that would have been much better but they did not go that route unfortunately and aftermath just ended up being a month not even barely that like 
less than a month worth of content to keep you playing the game. So yeah, that's how I feel about that. A good example of how they bundled characters correctly was in the MKX era. Like the bundles, the I think Combat Pack 2, when they like dropped that, it had like Alien, Triborg, and other two I ain't gonna remember off the top of my head, but just that alone was like, oh crap, like, okay. And Triborg was three characters in one, or four characters in one. The bundles in the past game were just so much better. But I went on, on about this part too much. Basically, I just don't feel like the characters that they bundled together wasn't good enough to keep the game going for a while like they thought it would be. It just, you know, wasn't. So, on the next topic, I don't, I made multiple rants about this. <laughs> no, just two. But that is going to be the Combat League. Now, you really have no reason to play mk11 they should have gave us a better reason to play the game now if you plan it for the competitive spirit leveling up all that you know that's all fine and everything that's the reason why a lot of people play fighting games and there's nothing wrong with that but in terms of grinding for something feeling like you earned something like cosmetics wise they just dropped the ball with that too injustice 2 had an amazing customization system and i don't know why they just threw it out it don't make sense it was so good and they just left us with this crappy system like for cosmetics and then the combat league you only get to earn like three main cosmetics a month that is not good there's like 30 something characters in this game and making it to where you can only earn like three things in a month's worth of time that are like how can I put it like legendary quality or y'all know what I'm trying to say like a quality that's meant to be like oh I got this skin you know and just dividing it among characters it, that's just it wasn't good and combat league is trash like in general the matchmaking on it is horrible some of the people's internet is horrible it's just it just sucks first the two sucks it's actually the worst ranking system that I've ever dealt with in any game and if they would have made it better, just made it a normal ranking system, it would have been perfectly fine. That would have gave a lot of re a lot of people reason to play. Just a good, decent ranking system. But yeah, that's also where they dropped the ball. I'm going to be saying that a lot. And something else where they dropped the ball, character archetypes. They want this game to be played in a specific way. It's very obvious. If you think of it, you know, just for a second, I'm not even going to say it. Just think about how most characters in the game play. They wanted this game to be played a certain way, so there's not that much diversity in terms of character picks. That's why me, personally, and a bunch of other people can't find their mains in this game. Like, I don't really have a main in MK11, and MK11 is the first fighting game where I have not had a main in. It's actually crazy to me. But yeah, I just feel like the... Character archetypes are just not diverse enough also, but that's something that Injustice 2 kind of had the problem with as well, but the difference with that game, there was no variation system, so, you know, the characters had all of their stuff, and, oh, that's something I didn't even think about, the variation system, too, the variation system is not good, the, Okay, put it like this. People think that the variation system is a good idea, but it's really not. All it does is make the game harder to balance and hurt and limit your character. That's what I personally feel like it does. And I'm saying this now, if the variation system is in any more NRS games, I probably won't be playing those games because the variation system has done nothing but hurt the game. Because at the end of the day, people just going to play the best variation anyway. It is what it is. So, yeah that too and the biggest problem on mk11 that they still haven't completely fixed it just feels like an unfinished game it literally feels like a beta and the number one thing about that is the hit boxes now if you have been playing mk11 since the game has released there is no way you sat there and went like what the heck that should not have hit i've been thinking about making a compilation of a bunch of people's clips where some stuff that should hit 
I mean, some stuff that shouldn't hit just hits. It happens so much in MK11 to the point where it feels like it's just a rushed game. And there's been a lot of rumors that it was a rushed game, and I completely believe that it is. But the whole thing with this game is it had so much potential, and it still has so much potential. But at this point, they're just done giving a crap about what we think. Now, y'all might be like, nah, it probably hasn't went that far. But trust me, they really don't care no more. If you played MKX and you saw how much they cared and really went out of their way for everybody in that game, compared to this, then you know. They do not give a crap like that anymore with MK11. But that's because, and I've already said this in a video before, they know that they can get away with everything they want to do. They know that no matter how much people whine or complain or threaten to leave the game, that they're going to shut up and come right back. So they really just don't care no more. And it's very, very obvious. They're even trying to sell, I think they're trying to sell the company. I remember they were trying to sell it to AT&T and another company too, but you can just obviously tell with the huge lack of effort in the game that they just don't care no more. And a lot of people think I'm hating on them when I say that. I'm really not. I'm just stating the obvious. There's so many things that can be pointed out in the game that are just, simply lazy and i thought by now because the game has been out for like a year and a couple months that they would have all this stuff fixed but they just haven't done it yet so now that i've discussed oh wait one more thing that i majorly left out the mechanics I'm not gonna go on about this too much but mk11 has very horrible mechanics mk11 when it comes down to it mk11 is a very solid game decent with horrible mechanics like the balance is great the game looks nice it plays well for the most part but the problem is it's just it feels unfinished and i'm getting really like annoyed just thinking about it because they could do so much to make the game better but it's just it just seems like it's time for I don't want to say the game to just, you know, be done and then they start with something else because we don't know what they're going to do with the talk of selling the company and everything, but they still have a chance to breathe light into this game. Combat Pack 2, if they release it in the right time, then this game will be fine. But unfortunately, what I feel like they're going to do is wait till the game is dead and then release Combat Pack 2 to resuscitate the game. That's what I really feel like they're going to do. And I feel like that's just not right. Like, why kill your game and then try to resuscitate it? Why not just keep it alive? It's not hard to keep a game going. I don't understand. There's so many games that's been out for years that are like paid service games. And fighting games can be considered that now, honestly, with all the DLC. Like, you know, a big DLC every three months will keep your game alive. I don't see how that's so hard with all the resources they have and everything. But that's just me. Now, to answer the question again, is the game going to die soon? Yes. If it stays at this rate and everything keeps going how it's going, it's going to die soon. I don't want it to die soon because I've already went through, you know, a game. Injustice 2, to be specific, Injustice 2 was what my channel was based off of. And when it died, it took my channel with it. And I told myself I'll never go through that crap again. I will not go through that crap again. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do if MK11 dies, but I'll figure it out, you know. But I don't want it to have to get to that point. They still have, like, plenty of time to breathe life into the game. I would say, no, not plenty of time. They probably got a month or two. If this month or two passes and nothing really changes, then y'all gonna come back to this video and be like, yep, Nick, you were right. Like the game looks like it's dying and everything. And it just sucks because it doesn't have to, but it is what it is. I just wanted to make this video discussing this because when I come back and look on this video after years pass, like I made this type of video with Injustice 2 and I was completely right about it. And I want to come back and remember what was wrong with the game. So this video is like, for me, a lot too 
because I want to remember everything that went wrong and what they could have changed and did better. But that's basically the video, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. Well, <laughs> that seems like a horrible way to end the video after talking about is the game gonna die. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video, but uh, nah, scratch that. Like, thank you for watching the video, and that is going to be the end of it. And I hope y'all enjoyed. I said it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's just too much of a habit. It's way too much of a habit. But I'm going to be ending the video here, y'all. MK11 is not looking good in the current state it is in. And I hope it gets better. Nick Ops out, everybody.